Are you considering buying a whole home water monitor and leak detector? Well, today on The Hookup, I've got all the top brands and all the best sellers from Moen, Flume, Streamlabs, and Finn, and I'm gonna walk you through the pros and cons of each of them and help you pick out the one that's right for you. There are two main types of leak detectors. There's cheap wireless ones that detect a puddle of water in a specific area, and then whole home monitoring solutions that track your water usage and look for unusual patterns that can indicate a leak in your plumbing like a burst pipe or a broken fixture. We're gonna cover the latter in this video, but if you're interested in the small wireless type, make sure you check out my other video specifically on that subject. If you're thinking about installing a whole home water monitor, you're probably trying to accomplish one of three goals. You either want to monitor your water usage to try to reduce your monthly water bill, you want to check your plumbing for leaks and other potential problems, or you want to protect your property from significant water damage by installing a monitor that will detect unusual patterns and automatically shut off your water to prevent catastrophic damage. Or maybe you want to do all those things. To determine how well these monitors could track your water usage, I ran two tests to determine the accuracy of each monitor. First, I ran a whole day test where I took a reading from my city's water meter in the morning and screenshotted the usage in each monitor's app. Then at the end of the day, I took another reading from my water meter, which I called my actual water usage, and then I determined the variance in each app's reported usage versus my actual usage. To minimize the effect of an inaccurate city water meter, I also did a small scale test by filling a five gallon bucket four times and recording the amount of water reported by each app. Fun fact about that, a five gallon bucket from Home Depot actually doesn't hold five gallons, which I figured out after running these tests and being confused by the data that I got. When I measured the actual volume of a five gallon bucket with a kitchen measuring cup, I learned that they actually hold 5.6 gallons, which made the test results significantly better. To test the monitor's ability to find leaks in the plumbing, I determined the minimum flow rate that could be detected by each system by slowly turning on a faucet until the real time flow was detected in the app. I also tested their ability to detect a micro leak by turning on a faucet to the point where it was only dripping and then I ran a drip test in each of the apps. To test their behavior during a large leak like a pipe burst, I ran my garden hose into my pool for 30 minutes at a rate of 3.5 gallons per minute, which would be a relatively small pipe burst but still over 100 gallons of water, so plenty to ruin your floors or cabinets. The five monitors that I installed and tested vary significantly in price, ease of installation, and functionality. So let's see how they did. Starting with the easiest to install, which is the Streamlabs monitor, or what I think they've recently rebranded as the Streamlabs Surface. This new name makes a lot of sense because it installs on top of your existing pipe without any tools at all. You'll need to have access to your main water supply before any branches and preferably after your main water shutoff valve. The Streamlabs monitor needs to be indoors or inside of a waterproof enclosure, and you'll need to have nearby power also in a waterproof enclosure. The Streamlabs monitor works by using ultrasonic transit time, which basically means that it shoots sound waves into your pipes and measures the difference in how long the upstream waves take to receive compared to the downstream waves. When no water is running, the times are the same, but if the water is flowing, the upstream wave will be slower than the downstream wave, and the flow rate can be calculated from that difference. The entire installation and calibration of the Streamlabs monitor took less than 10 minutes, zero tools, and made no changes to my existing plumbing. In the usage accuracy test, the Streamlabs monitor overreported my daily usage by 7% on the large scale test and overreported by 7% on the bucket test. The minimum flow rate that could be detected by the Streamlabs monitor was 0.3 gallons per minute, and it predictably overreported real time usage by around 5 to 10%, which is consistent with the overall usage accuracy that I saw. The Streamlabs monitor isn't plumbed into your house, so it can't do a micro leak pressure test and therefore can't be used to detect any small leaks. During the large leak test, the Streamlabs monitor alerted me to a leak after the 3.5 gallon per minute hose had been running for exactly 20 minutes. And since it lacks any automated shutoff valve, I would have needed to be at the house to fix that issue that it reported. What I liked about the Streamlabs monitor is that at around $170, it's the least expensive option and definitely the easiest to install. It has a great looking app with a quick overview that shows you if there's any water running in your pipes and your current daily usage. Clicking in for more details shows hourly water usage breakdown as well as day-to-day, week-to-week, and month-to-month -month comparison. After learning about your water usage patterns, the Streamlabs can alert you via push notifications to any unusual water flow that could indicate a leak, and setting it to away mode will increase the sensitivity of those alerts. What I don't love about the Streamlabs monitor is that a 7% overreporting of water usage is pretty high when monitoring is the main purpose of the product. I also found that the Streamlabs app would fail to start occasionally and needed to be forced closed to function properly. 
It's also unfortunate that some features like email and text alerts are only available if you pay the $5.99 per month Streamlabs Plus subscription, which is also necessary to access their API for integration with smart home platforms like Home Assistant. Next on the ease of installation continuum is the Flume 2 water monitor that clips on your home's existing water meter. And instead of trying to monitor the water in the pipe, it instead monitors your water meter, which should theoretically be very accurate. By using the magnetic field created by your meter's internal mechanical components, the Flume 2 can act like a mechanical water meter without actually having to be installed inside your pipes. Because your water meter is usually located outside your house and away from power, the Flume 2 is weather resistant and runs off of batteries. Thankfully, the monitoring technology is fairly simple and low energy, so the Flume 2 can run for about two years between battery changes. The Flume 2 also has an indoor component that just plugs into an electrical outlet and acts as a bridge between your Flume 2 sensor and the internet. Because there's no modification to your plumbing and no electrical involved, the Flume 2 install should take less than 20 minutes. And the only tool required in my case was a small shovel to excavate the eight years worth of dirt and sand out of my city water meter housing. In the usage accuracy test, the Flume 2 was predictably very accurate to my water meter and showed less than a 1% variance in my whole day test. In the small scale bucket test, the Flume 2 also performed very well with just a 2% variance that could probably be attributed to rounding errors in the overall usage category of the app. The minimum flow rate that the Flume 2 was able to measure was 0.1 gallons per minute, so it should be able to find a significantly smaller leak than the Streamlabs monitor, but it still won't be able to see a dripping faucet or a leaky toilet. During the large leak test, the Flume 2 didn't alert me at all because the default settings are to only alert on a flow rate over 5 gallons per minute or a water flow that lasts for over 4 hours and 10 minutes. But these values are adjustable within the app. One major difference between the Flume water sensor and the Streamlabs in my house is that since the Flume is installed at the water meter and the Streamlabs is in my garage, the Flume will monitor both the irrigation system and my household usage, while the Streamlabs will only see the water that goes into my house. I like that at around $200, the Flume 2 is relatively cheap, it's easy to install, as accurate as your water meter, and has integrations with SmartThings, Home Assistant, and even irrigation systems like Beehive. The Flume app shows daily water usage broken down by hour and attempts to determine how much of that water usage was inside and how much was for your irrigation if you have it. It also lets you view weekly breakdowns of your water usage, and it allows you to compare with similar households to get an idea for how well you're controlling your personal water usage. What I don't love about the Flume is that they recently added a subscription service to access their most useful features. My app says that since I was an early customer, I have access to real-time water usage, detailed history, and custom leak detection, but new customers are gonna to need to pay $49 a year for a subscription to get those same features, which is a total deal breaker for me. The Flume 2 is also unfortunately not compatible with every water meter, so it might not even be an option for you, and you'll need to check your meter's compatibility on their website before you purchase it. Next, not as easy to install as the Streamlabs monitor or the Flume 2, but definitely doable for most homeowners, is the Finn Smart Water Assistant. The Finn installs anywhere in your house that has a hot and cold water supply and an unswitched outlet, which for me was under my kitchen sink. All you have to do is shut off the water at your sink and then unscrew the water lines and attach the Finn pressure sensors in between the water supply and the sink lines. This install took me roughly 30 minutes, including removing all the cleaning supplies from under my sink and then putting them back afterwards. Even though it's hooked up to a single faucet, the Finn can monitor your entire home's plumbing by measuring the water pressure in each line. The general idea is that when water is used by another faucet, the pressure will drop in all the pipes, and the Finn can then use that information as well as the ratio of the water usage between hot and cold lines to make an educated guess not only about how much water is being used, but also which fixture is using it. In practice, the Finn didn't classify every water usage correctly, but it wasn't terrible. In the usage accuracy test, the Finn Smart Water Assistant underreported my total water usage by around 5% in the all day test, but was off by a staggering 69% in the small scale bucket test, reporting 38 gallons of water instead of 22.4 gallons of actual usage. I'm not sure exactly what caused this, but it could have been because I was using an outdoor fixture or because the flow rate was higher than most of the other faucets in my house. The Finn doesn't show any real-time water usage, so I wasn't able to measure the smallest flow possible, but the Finn can perform a micro-leak test, since unlike the Flume 2 and Streamlabs monitor, the Finn is plumbed into your home. By manually shutting off your main water supply, the plumbing inside your house should theoretically be a completely sealed system and maintain the same pressure indefinitely. Using the Plumbing Health Check option in the Finn app, the Finn was easily able to detect a drop in pressure and diagnose the dripping faucet, as well as give troubleshooting next steps within the app. During the large leak test, the Finn alerted me after 20 minutes via push notification and text message, and noted when the leak started. And then I also got another alert when the leak was resolved. 
At an MSRP of $300, the Fin is more expensive than the Flume and Streamlabs monitor, but it's the cheapest device to offer micro-leak detection. The Fin app did a decent job of tracking water usage throughout the day, and categorization of water usage by fixture worked acceptably well. Interestingly, even though the Fin Smart Water Assistant is installed inside my house under my kitchen sink, it was still able to detect and relatively accurately monitor the water used by my irrigation system, which is neat, but it might not actually be a good thing. The downside to the fin is that to perform at its best, it needs a plumbing system that doesn't experience too many variations in pressure throughout the day. This means you're going to need all the bells and whistles on your plumbing system. And that includes an expansion bladder for your hot water heater, a backflow preventer, and a pressure regulating valve. Without these things, it becomes much more difficult to monitor the pressure in your water line because it can be affected by things like your neighbor's water usage, the temperature of your hot water heater, and normal variations in the supply pressure. In my opinion, the Fin also has the least intuitive app. There's no main dashboard or control panel for at-a-glance viewing, and the visualizations of water usage aren't as helpful as the other apps that I tested. The Fin also has limited smart home connectivity and relies on IFT for integrations, which at this point is about the least reliable and most inconvenient way to connect your smart devices. Still, if your goal is to be able to detect micro leaks in your plumbing and measure usage, then the Fin is the cheapest option and the only one that can accomplish these goals without making permanent changes to your plumbing. And that leaves us with the last two options, the Moen Flow and the Streamlabs Control, which both need to be plumbed into your main water line and therefore should be installed by a professional. These devices get installed into your plumbing directly after your main water shutoff, but before any branches for hot and cold water. In addition to highly accurate water monitoring, they also include a secondary motorized water shutoff that can automatically turn your water off in the event of a leak. Both of these devices also offer automated micro-leak detection where they'll shut off their internal valve and then measure any pressure losses in your pipes. Between the two, the Streamlabs Control feels like it has a much higher build quality and has primarily metal parts compared to the Moen Flow, which is mostly plastic. The Moen Flow uses a mechanical impeller inside the pipe to measure water flow, while the Streamlabs Control uses the same type of ultrasonic detection as the Streamlabs Monitor. Impellers are generally very accurate, but they can wear out over time, while ultrasonic metering has no moving parts and therefore shouldn't wear out, but it might be less accurate. Both devices are available with different installation options to be compatible with your plumbing, but I use the 1-inch shark bite fittings for the Streamlabs and the female thread pipe fittings for the Moen Flow. As I said, it is recommended that both of these products are installed by a licensed plumber, but I called in a favor to a friend in the profession to look over my shoulder on a Saturday to make sure I didn't screw anything up. You got this thing that's got the Streamlabs on here, and it's got this bit on here. You're messing up my shot. <laughs> we got the flow by Moen already, and then we got the Streamlabs here, and then this piece is hopefully just gonna slot onto the existing space and, and, uh, and not get messed up. I installed the flow and the Streamlabs at the exact same time, but overall the install process took a little bit less than an hour. In the usage accuracy test, the Moen Flow was very accurate, underreporting my total usage by about 1.5% compared to my water meter. And in the small scale bucket test, the flow was off by around 2.5%. The minimum flow that the Moen was able to detect was 0.2 gallons per minute, and the micro leak drip test worked perfectly. You can schedule these leak tests as often as you'd like or run them on demand, and the Moen Flow will automatically close your water main and monitor pressure to look for leaks. During the large-scale leak test, the Moen Flow didn't alert me to a leak at all, but that's actually to be expected since it clearly states that the app is in learning mode for the first 7 to 10 days, training itself to look for unusual water patterns. In my opinion, the Moen Flow had the best app interface by a significant margin. It has all kinds of great analytics like pressure, temperature, daily usage, water goals, and AI fixture detection to determine which categories use the most water. The Flow app was also the most responsive, quickest to load, and showed the most accurate updates for real-time water usage. Another huge advantage of the Moen Flow is that as of August 17, 2021, Moen no longer requires a subscription for any of their advanced features. You can still choose to join the Moen Flow Protect subscription plan, but it only adds insurance deductible reimbursement and extended warranty to your device, and it isn't needed for any of the features in the Smart Water app. The Flow web API has also been scraped by the Home Assistant team, so you can use the complete feature set of your Moen Flow from within Home Assistant. But keep in mind that this wasn't a publicly documented API release by Moen, so its compatibility could go away at any time. As I said, none of the monitors offer local connection to the device, so continued functionality is dependent on the parent company staying in business. Moen is a huge name in plumbing, so I don't see them going out of business anytime soon, and hopefully that will include keeping the Flow cloud service online for the foreseeable future. 
Last is the most expensive monitor that I tested, the Streamlabs Control. The Control feels like a premium product with heavy duty metal construction that made me feel confident about installing it into my main water line, but it also comes at a premium price of $599. The included SharkBite fittings made it relatively easy to install, but again, Streamlabs themselves recommends that it gets installed by a licensed plumber, so I'm not really sure how important ease of installation is. In the usage accuracy test, the Streamlabs control underreported my total usage by 7.7% .7 in the all day test and underreported by 10% in the bucket test. The minimum flow that the Streamlabs control was able to detect was 0.2 gallons per minute, and the micro leak test worked perfectly, easily identifying my dripping faucet. Just like the Moen Flow, you can schedule these leak tests as often as you'd like or run them on demand and the Streamlabs control will take care of the rest. During the large leak test, the Streamlabs control alerted me at the same 20 minute mark as the Streamlabs monitor, which represents about 70 gallons of water. But the difference between the Streamlabs monitor and the Streamlabs control is that I get the option of shutting off my water to prevent any further damage. After opening the package, I really wanted to love the Streamlabs control because it looks like it was built to last, which is important for something that I'm gonna be installing in my home's main water supply. I do like the Streamlabs app, but I can't help but think that it's just not quite as good as the Mo and Flow app, and it also hangs way too often. As I mentioned, there is a monthly fee to fully unlock the features of the app and to be able to use their API to add your Streamlabs devices to your smart home hub. But with the Streamlabs control, there's also an option of getting it installed by a Streamlabs certified plumber, which then gives you a longer warranty and a lifetime subscription for free. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this video, there weren't any Streamlabs certified plumbers in my area, so that wasn't really an option. I did ask Streamlabs if they were considering a change to their subscription structure in response to Moen's recent changes, and they said that that's something they were considering, but they had no concrete plans yet. So after all this testing, I'd like to say that it was a really close race, but looking at the data, the Moen flow just seems like the obvious choice. Not only was it very accurate with less than 1.5% deviation from my water meter, but it also has automatic shutoff, micro leak detection, AI fixture detection, the most feature rich and responsive app, doesn't require any monthly fees, and it's backed by a huge plumbing focused company, so the cloud service isn't likely to stop working anytime soon. The plastic construction of the Moen Flow did give me a little bit of pause, but then I realized that a significant portion of my plumbing is already made of plastic joints and fittings that I never worry about. In my research, I read a lot of reviews from people who experienced failures when installing the Moen Flow outside, mostly related to water intrusion around the power plug. But none of the other monitors except the Flume are rated for outdoor use, so that's kind of a moot point in my opinion. If your only option is an outdoor installation, the Flume water meter also looked good to me until I learned about the new subscription plan, which in my opinion makes it a significantly worse option since the most important features of it are behind a subscription wall and the yearly subscription is 25% of the overall price of the monitor. The Finn smart water monitor seems like it might be a useful tool that could be used to move around in different houses to test for small leaks. Since no permanent changes need to be made to your plumbing, you could use it at multiple properties or loan it to friends to test their plumbing systems. But in all honesty, a $10 water pressure gauge like plumbers use would do the same thing without the hassle of setting up Wi-Fi or using the app. The Streamlabs monitor and control seemed really promising, but between the two there was a 15% variation in water usage per day, which is significantly too much for me to be able to recommend them. I did try the recalibration process several times, unfortunately with no change in accuracy. I've got links down in the description for all the monitors that I tested, as well as a link to my other video on the other type of leak detector. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.